Hi everyone, welcome to the solution video for Workout Wednesday 2021 Week 10 in Tableau, Can You Build a Must Include Filter? This is a really fun challenge because it answers a request I had uh, recently where someone wanted to identify specific products and really a combination of products or things on an order and they didn't want to filter to that specific product information they wanted to see the full order information associated with those products and so if you look at this and let's look at how this functions we can select I'll select two of these items here or let's actually just select the um, the three rings let's select this wall clock What's actually happening is when we do this, it looks like it's filtering. So we have now identified, would be the best way to say it, the four orders that have this wall clock associated with them. But you can see we're still retaining the entire order sales information and the total quantity. And you can see in the tooltip, we've got the number of each product and then the sales amount associated with them. So we're getting a really nice feedback mechanism here. So we're finding the orders with this specific product on them and isolating them down. And we've also added a secondary condition that we can identify another product. So let's actually filter to or limit our orders to another request. So let's say it must also include this global task chair in black that's associated with this order from Cassandra. Sorry, I mean from Dean. And let's choose that black chair. So here it is, the global black task chair. And now we've got just our single order, but again, we've got that entire order information. There's even other products on this uh, specific order that we can see. Uh, before we jump into Tableau, I do want to say that this is using a pretty recent version of Tableau. You'll need at least, I want to say Tableau 2020.4, maybe 2020.3, because we are going to be using set controls. These two items at the top here are sets, although they look like quick filters, they're actually set controls. So you'll need a version that allows you to add set controls to your different dashboards and visualizations. Okay, let's pop into Tableau. All right, here's our final product, and this is what we're going to rebuild. So let's start with just bringing on the order ID, the sum of sales, and the quantity. To color the um, measures, I'm just going to drag on measure names to color on my all marks card, and that's going to give us all uh, give us the two colors that I chose for this. You can do it any way you want. You can just add one color for each marks card, but this is quite nice because it gives you a dimension and it'll give you access to a discrete color palette for you to add those different colors. So this is kind of step one. I'm also going to drag this and make this a little bit taller so that we can see the bars are a little bit wider and look a little bit nicer for our end users. Now comes the fun part. So we want to generate interactivity functionality. I don't want to call it a filter necessarily so that people can choose orders that have specific products on them. So for that we are going to create a set. We're going to create a set based off of the product. So if you right click on product and you go to create, you're going to create a set. And So this is going to be our first product set. To initialize it, I'm just going to set it to use all. That means it's going to set you, it's going to take all of the different product name values in our data set and put them inside of that set. A set is a row level calculation. It returns a true or a false. It's a Boolean result. Um, so that's one of the things that makes them really cool and flexible. You can also do calculated conditions or top conditions. You can combine sets. They're very powerful, but for now we're just going to keep it pretty basic. It's just going to be use all. Eventually we'll get a pick list for that product set. So let me go ahead and drag that on. Now uh, when you create this product set, usually what happens, and this is kind of the what I'm talking about is you'll get this pick list. Um, and more traditionally, what happens or how sets have been used in Tableau up to a certain point is you would use this as a filter. So it would either be N or out of the set, N being true and out being false, because everything's in the set, everything is shown here. I'll even drag this on so you can see that it's true or false um, for each uh, product on here. So you can see all the products that are in there. Instead, you can set this to show in or out of the set. So these are all inside of the set because everything is there. But when you have it as a filter specifically, or in and out like this, and let's go in and let's actually just pick one from here so you can see what the functionality is. Let's pick that while you're out sign. You're going to see that it's filtering. It's, it's acting exactly like a quick filter. I filtered each of these orders, but there's only one product on that order. It's this sign. Um, 
or message book, I guess is what it really is. So you can see how many there are on each of these orders, but all that other information is not retained. So we're going to work around this by using our set result in a different way. So what we want to do is we're going to create a calculated field, and this is going to be a level of detail expression. We're going to call this product inclusion. And we're going to make it a fixed level of detail expression by the order ID, and we're going to take the max of that product set, the first product set. Remember, a set's going to return a Boolean true or false, so this is going to say, okay, find per order ID what the max value is. Is it true or is it false? And it just so happens that true is uh, greater than false, so it will find the max there. So if there's any single one, any single product on your order that is true, then this will return true for your order ID. Otherwise, it will uh, go to false. Let me bring this on to our visualization so you can see what's happening. Uh, so right now these are all set to false. There's probably like one true one because of that sign somewhere if we were to look really closely. But this kind of starts the formation of what we've got. And let me actually edit this and let's select them all again so you can see this switching over to true. Now they're all true. Um, and again, you're seeing uh, no filtering here thus far. You're just seeing a Boolean result for each order. So if an order had this while you're out message book on there, it would be true and the other ones would be false. Let's pop this back to use all. And then what we're going to do is this product inclusion, we do want it to actually be a filter. I'm going to just pop that over here and we're going to set it to true, which is going to be all of the information. And so now we don't need that on there, but we've got it here. I'm going to make a new dashboard. So let's drag on sheet four. And this is where the magic kind of happens. Let's actually go here, go to sets and do our first product set. And here we get almost like a quick filter. It's our set control. That's what this is. And we can customize this. Let's make it a multiple value drop down. Let's add the apply button here. And now let's pick out, let's go back to our wall clock again and let me click apply. So now we've got exactly what we had before when I showed you that first demo. We've got our four orders that have the wall clock on them. We've got that total amount. Obviously a wall clock I hope is not about $3,000. That'd be crazy. But you can see um, all the different orders and you can tell that the product is associated with that. So that's kind of step one here. And then we just repeat that for our second product. So you're going to build another set. It's going to be set two. And then you're going to update your filter calculation to include this other scenario. So let me go to the solution bar chart so you can see what the calculations are that are driving that. So here is the product inclusion filter. This is the original one and it's just got both scenarios. Is it in the primary product filter and the secondary one? So this is true or false and true or false. So a true and a false is a false, a true and a true is a true, a false and a false is a false. So this is just going to evaluate and make sure that both sets, both of the values of each of these individual sets is set to true to keep and limit the orders that are accurately associated with what we're choosing from those drop downs. And I've gone ahead and put this on as a context filter. This, the context filter will be nice because it's actually going to limit the set for our secondary filter here so that when we do choose something, when we have our secondary picker, it's going to be a subset of uh, products that are actually relevant to what we've chosen. So that's why we get this smaller, slim down list of items and not everything repeated and find ourselves in basically like a filter gap or a filter hole where there's nothing relevant to do. And so again, that's kind of the heart of this challenge. Then we have a really simple, straightforward, um, big numbers, KPIs, whatever you want to call it section. This is just made up of measure names and measure values. So we've got four measures here, the number of orders, that's the count distinctive order ID. We've got the percent of total orders, which is um, the count D of orders divided by the fixed count D of orders so that we know there's 5,009 total orders, but when we actually um, limit those inside of the set, which I'll show you with that percent of total orders, 
we're going to see that value. So there's our number of orders, which is if it's inside that inclusion filter, then we're going to consider the order ID and we'll count it. So how many target orders? And then here's just that total number of orders, which could also be a fixed LED, but doesn't isn't doesn't necessarily have to be the average order amount which is the same thing. Hey, what's the order amount? The sales, if it's inside of that, divide that sum by the number of orders, which is that same calculation we had before. And then the average order quantity is near identical. We're just using the quantity instead of the sum of sales there, so the sum of quantity. And then by virtue of how those sets function, and specifically this combined Boolean action here, this inclusion filter, these values will change depending on what we've set for our set um, controls. And then the last piece of this is actually another pretty simple thing, which is to just build out a Vizen tooltip. I will unhide what that looks like. So let me unhide the Vizen tooltip sheet. There's nothing fa too fancy associated with this sheet. It's purely products on rows and then our measure names and measure values that again our sales and our quantity. And then there's some banding on each product line. And then there is a grand total, which was done by dragging on total from the analytics pane. This doesn't have any filtering on it. Once you bring it on on the Vizen tooltip here, that's where it's actually going to take place. So you'll see here's that section with the order details, and I've customized the height and the width to um, have kind of like the optimal experience for the Vizen tooltip. I do find when you work with Vizen tooltips that typically, especially for like a cross tab, I'll leave it and standard mode and so that means Tableau is actually going to read the create the sizing in standard mode meaning it's not going to try to resize it to fit width or entire view or anything like that so this will kind of get the best experience where you've got the spacing the way you want our product names are kind of long so the spacing will be as as it looks or as it appears here for all, both of our measures and our product and that's it you basically add that um, to your bar chart and then the rest of it is formatting so we've got our our big number sheet we've got a couple blanks for these different dividers and then we've got our two set controls right here so that we can quickly uh, identify which products we are going to require to be on a specific order and that's it I hope you enjoyed this solution thanks for watching